Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and we get so many questions about ingredients and natural ingredients in particular. I thought I'd make a video to help inform you about cosmetic ingredients that aren't as natural as you think. Let's look at the biggest culprit out there and one that really gets misrepresented as being natural and a lot of people think it's natural and yet it's also really, really important in a lot of your foaming formulations and that's Cocomita Propyl Betaine. Now I often see Cocomita Propyl Betaine written on an ingredient list as Cocomita Propyl Betaine and in brackets from coconuts. Well the first thing is a lot of Cocomita Propyl Betaine, despite the name, actually comes from palm oil. But if that's not an issue for your consumer, the other issue is you shouldn't be representing this ingredient as natural because it's not. Now, Cocomita Propyl Betaine is a fantastic surfactant that we use in foaming products because it helps boost foam, it helps improve mildness of the product, and it's a fantastic mild but effective cleansing agent. So that's why it gets used so commonly. It also helps reduce potential irritancy from primary or anionic surfactants in foaming formulations. So it's a really good addition to a formula, but it's not completely natural. There is a synthetic component and it shouldn't be in products marketed as being all natural. Now let's take a look at some gums that are misrepresented. And the two most common gums that get misrepresented as being natural when they do have synthetic processing and are therefore partially synthetic and that is your guar hydroxypropyl trimonium chloride and your hydroxy ethyl cellulose. Now these two materials help increase the viscosity of formulations and they get used a lot in foaming products as well. They may also be used in conditioners to help stabilize and increase the viscosity of the formula. Now guar hydroxypropyl trimonium chloride is turned into a cationic or positively charged version of the naturally derived guar gum. Guar gum does not have a charge, so it doesn't have the same conditioning properties or benefits that guar hydroxypropyl trimonium chloride does. But guar gum is naturally derived, whereas guar hydroxypropyl trimonium chloride has been through synthetic processing and is partially synthetic. Similarly, hydroxyethyl cellulose is not the same as standard cellulose. Cellulose again is a naturally derived material, but hydroxyethyl cellulose has been synthetically modified to make it hydrate faster, better, clearer, and with some performance advantages compared to standard cellulose. So both of these materials, while very useful in formulations, with their modifications, and the modifications have been done to enhance their performance in a formulation, they are not completely natural. So don't belong in a product marketed as being 100% natural either. Another material that gets misrepresented is behentrimonium methosulfate. Now there's not many cationic conditioning agents that are out there at the moment that are completely natural or naturally derived. So a lot of your conditioning formulas, hair conditioners to detangle the hair and condition the hair after cleansing or shampooing contain behentrimonium methosulfate and incorrectly persuade a consumer to believe that the formula is therefore natural. This material is not all natural or naturally derived. It contains quite some synthetic portions. But again, it's been modified for its performance benefits. So it's definitely a much more mild conditioning agent, but it's not completely natural. So it doesn't belong in a conditioner that's being marketed as completely natural or naturally derived because behentrimonium methosulfate is definitely synthetically modified. It is more mild to use in a formula than behentrimonium chloride or cetrimonium chloride, but it's still synthetically processed and synthetically modified for its performance benefits. Now here's a topical conversation to have, and that is vitamins. There's a lot of vitamins used in personal care that aren't completely natural either. For example, vitamin A or retinol, while it is chemically identical to naturally occurring vitamin A, all of the vitamin A and retinol that is in cosmetic formulas is synthetically made. Similarly, your B vitamins, again, while they are identical to what occurs in nature, for commercial reasons, they are processed and produced using synthetic materials. 
You will have to check your vitamin C sources. Some of them are naturally derived while some may be produced synthetically. And also check your vitamin E carefully. Again, some is completely synthetic, although identical to nature, while some is naturally derived. Finally, let's take a look at some preservatives. Now, again, there's a lot of preservatives out there that we can use in natural products, but they're not necessarily natural preservatives. And these also get misrepresented commonly, especially in products marketed as being 100% natural when the preservatives may not be. Common examples are potassium sorbate, sorbic acid, sodium benzoate, and benzoic acid or benzoyl alcohol. Now, while all of these materials exist in nature, for commercial reasons, in personal care, they are all synthetically sourced and produced. So if you see any of those inky names on your cosmetic product, the product is not 100% natural or naturally derived as it may claim to be. Again, the vitamins and the preservatives I've just mentioned as being synthetic are still identical to what occurs in nature, but for commercial reasons, they are produced synthetically for cosmetic use. Now being synthetic or being natural doesn't necessarily mean that the ingredient is safer or not safe for you. Please watch some of my other videos where I pose the question, is natural safer? And talk you through some examples where natural is not necessarily safer, although a lot of consumers will typically jump to that conclusion. I've also got some videos where I talk you through silicones in skincare and hair care and how they have an undeservedly bad rap. So being natural or synthetic doesn't necessarily mean that the ingredient is going to be inherently safer or more harmful, and it certainly doesn't mean that your performance may be impacted. There's some fantastic natural ingredients out there with some excellent performance results, and we're seeing more and more actives and extracts with efficacy data to show their benefits in formulations. But there's a lot of functional materials like the ones I've just run through where they get misrepresented as being natural in a formulation when they're really not. If you're using any of these materials in your formulations or your brand, then you should not be calling your products 100% natural or naturally derived. And you should not imply to a consumer that they are. And of course, there's lots of benefits to using the best of both worlds. A lot of synthetic ingredients that get used in personal care have been modified to enhance their performance benefits. They may have natural components still, which is a great marketing story to convey to your consumer, as long as you tell it right. And of course, there's lots of natural ingredients with their natural benefits too. Take a look at what your consumer's really looking for with their product. Make sure you represent the ingredients and your products fair and honestly, and make sure you check their sources properly before assuming an ingredient is all natural. I hope you've found this video informative. Please make sure you watch those other videos and of course search our YouTube channel. I've got loads of other videos and topics on this for you. Please give the video a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating.